everything coffee is empty and we are ready to rock and roll what's going on guys welcome back to another video welcome back to the shop and well check out this view real quick before we jump on inside and talk about what we're doing today to the fifth gen two 2020 duramax is hanging out with one another brothers from another mother but cut from the same cloth my goodness i don't get to see these things side by side every day but when i do i don't want to be selfish in it and i want to share it with all of you so today's an awesome day guys where we are actually going to continue cutting on in literally to our fifth gen comments welcome back to the shop we've had jake over here this morning i will uh move the fan is that annoying? Hopefully that doesn't come through too much in post-production. It, it is humid out, guys, so we need to have that fan on. We don't have any HVAC in this garage. It's something that I've considered doing, but the short of the long is we actually might be moving into a different shop at the end of the year. I can't really say much more about that right now, but there's actually some big moves that are being made kind of behind the curtain, if you will. And there's gonna be more details on that to come. But back to this shop right here, I considered buying uh, like a small kind of like general HVAC system that would do heating and cooling. It would be something where we could kind of just install it right up in the ceiling and it would definitely cool things down. I'm not totally shut out to that idea right now, but it's kind of like a decision on, well, it's only gonna be for borrowed time and will we be able to actually make do? Fortunately, we do have really great insulation in here. So it does maintain an on average cooler temperature as long as we don't have all the doors open. Once we open things up, it definitely heats up in here pretty quickly. Today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, will be about our limited headlights. We are going to be doing something that will truly allow us to create a one-of-a-kind truck. Sorry guys, Jake's back here. He's actually cleaning up the headlights. We'll show you what we're trying to clean up on them before we actually get into that project. But like I was saying, we're doing something that really allows us to take a truck and make it truly one of a kind and truly a product of our shop here, Enthusiast World Headquarters 3.0. I would say that building headlights can be one of the most impactful means of truly making your truck stand out from the rest because just straight up as it is, a lot of people don't really like to cut open very expensive headlights. In the video last night, yo bro, did you see in the comments where we were just getting ripped apart for our mental math abilities. Yeah, dude, you were nowhere near right either. I, I don't even know. Like, I swear I just threw a number out. Like, no excuses. I was so wrong. It was ridiculous. Like, like a it was 2,700 bucks. I said 3,700. What, what did you say? 33. <laughs> yeah, go us. But wait, why'd you agree with me? Because, dude, I was completely blank. I had no idea. My math was just like, nah, not right now. You're like alphabets, bro? <laughs> I said $3,700 headlights. I was completely off. They're like $2,700 worth of headlights. And honestly, if you don't feel comfortable with cutting open headlights, I would advise never doing it. But this is one of those mods that allows you to truly transform the end result. It gets you to that point where you can say that you have a set of headlights that are totally custom and unlike any other truck that's really ever existed. And sometimes what's cool about the headlight building process is you see some that are done extremely well and it inspires others to do the same. And that's really what I love about YouTube. That's what I love about social media. That's what I love about this whole industry is like when somebody does something that's really, really solid, it almost inspires others to do that. And that's kind of why we like to make these somewhat instructional type of videos. Although Jake and I are by no means experts, we kind of just do. And if we mess up, we correct. But when it comes out good, we say congratulations. And that's why you got to try new things in life. So as I said, Jake's actually working on getting these things cleaned up right now. That cleaned up pretty good, actually. Yeah, show them the back of that one. But these things are pretty dirty right now. As you can see, um, there's just like some road debris, a little bit of dust, some dirt, everything like that. And dust and dirt will be, literally mark my words, your worst nightmare if you decide to go in and actually perform surgery on these headlights like we're about to do. We can talk a little bit more about that later in the video because as I walk back outside, we actually learned a lot from our first ever set of headlights. Fortunately, they turned out fantastic, but there were some things that we almost did that could have truly jeopardized the final product. Now, if you're new to the channel or you haven't tuned in for a little while, I just want to let you guys know that this 2020 Silverado High Country Duramax is Dream Diesel Giveaway number 11. Yes, we are giving that thing away. And if you haven't gotten your entries yet, you should definitely consider doing so. As of right now, ordinarily every $5 gets you an entry on the site, but right now every $5 gets you five times entries for a chance to take that thing home with $10,000 in the center console. So if you guys wanna truly have a one of a kind truck in your driveway or wherever it is that you're gonna park it, consider getting entered because you might be taking it home. You gotta keep all the nice cool air inside. I know. Fortunately, it actually feels like pretty decent in here. But then we got this hot head. He's warming up the overall ambient temperature in here. Cool it, dude. Cool it. We're all watching. We're watching. Watch yourself. Oh, that was a good one. Right in the eyeballs. <laughs> Yo, 
guys, this dude just doesn't get it sometimes. Literally today, I did a supply run. Like, I mean, literally today, I just got to the shop with brand new glasses. Hey, let me get them off you. <laughs> Thanks. I think OSHA's calling. <laughs> they want their village idiot back. <laughs> safety glasses. Those are the things that are crucial, but you tend to not take care of. Our old safety glasses literally look like we're looking through a matte lens. Like, Our old safety glasses look like, like that. that. <laughs> so I think it's actually questionable on like how safe it is to wear the safety glasses, being that we can't see what we're actually trying to work on. Yeah, don't worry. Bro. Yeah, everything's completely fine. So Shake's working on getting the housings all nice and cleaned up and everything like that. I wanted to give you guys an update on our RAM. We've got a few things going on. All of our goodies from flight fabrication are actually on the second shelf of our mobile table and they will be going on as soon as we get done what we're going to be doing today in part to what we're doing over there this truck actually has seen a decent amount of oxidation on the axles both front and rear so we've gotten this thing completely cleaned up which is a very nice perk of having a trench drain right under the lift a not so nice perk of having it is when you lose nuts and bolts because they go inside the trench drain this is tragic hasn't happened at all yet close though Close. Some close yeah, calls, like close. really close calls, like dangling by a thread close calls. Yeah. So anyway, Jake got everything all cleaned up. We're waiting on everything to dry. We're actually gonna be going over the axles with a rust encapsulator. And then we are going to be painting them satin black, just going over some little things. This truck's gonna have a lot of really nice powder coat on it. And surprisingly, these Dodges, this truck's only been around for about a year now, 10,000 miles on it. It just isn't as nice as I would like it to be. And we have the opportunity and the time to go in and clean it up. I've done this before on a few of my trucks, so I'm probably not gonna film 100% of it, maybe get some time lapse for you guys. It will clean up things like that very, very nicely. Right. That hurts. Um, I have an update for you. Remember that shirt that I was talking to you about? Well, it's almost done. Really? That shirt, yeah. The one that says, I am a liability to myself. I'll have it for you soon. Okay. <laughs> it's Jake's new uniform, essentially. Walking hazard. <laughs> so the other day, we actually didn't film this, but we did drop off all those other parts that we took off of the suspension to Martin's powder coat out in Ephrata. They are going to be starting the work of powder coating those components. Pretty much any day now, we should have them back soon. We are still waiting actually for a few other components to arrive for what we're going to be doing on the front end of this truck. The company is just a little bit behind. That's all right, there are a lot of businesses that are kind of behind right now with everything going on in the world. So we will be getting all that stuff powder coated and it's gonna look fantastic. And then all of our body panels, bumper, grill, blah, 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 are down at Peach Bottom, but we actually have to make another delivery to Peach Bottom which is the headlight bezels that we will be literally extracting in today's video. Wow, you know, I looked at these when they were on the shelf and I'm like, that's actually a huge tote. But really? now that we see it with an object in it, because look, like the Denali headlight for comparison you size difference. In one, yeah. yeah, like look at that, look at that size difference. Damn. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Dude, that's crazy. I made that comment when I bought this truck. I said headlights just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But yeah, anyway, we picked these up today because we are going to take every precaution necessary to make sure that no dust or debris accumulates on these housings in here. Come to find out, this is actually like a tin foil like substance. This is not like a chrome piece of plastic like the chrome is on the exterior of let's just say like the door trim there or the molding on the side. It's actually a very delicate material. And even if you touch it with your finger, it will literally scratch because of all the micro dust on your fingers. It is that, that sensitive. So we're going to take precaution once we get these open to keep any dust off of the inside of the lights once we blow them out and everything like that after we cut them. And then we're also taking another precaution with these. So I found at least through talking with a few friends, one being Chris from Flyride, he's out in California, he builds car headlights like Lamborghini headlights, GTR headlights and all that good stuff. So I don't know if I'm saying this right. I said nitrile, he said nitrile. I would say Jake's probably a little bit more correct in his grammatical pronunciations. But these gloves are very important. We actually didn't wear gloves last time. It didn't do any harm to Dream Diesel giveaway number 11's headlights, but but it's nice to keep the oils from your fingers out of this general vicinity. Wow, that's a minute for a pronunciation. Both of us were right. Nice, I'll take it. So in order to cut those things open, we have one very special tool. If you guys caught the headlight video for the high country, you saw this, but it's literally an oscillator. This is again, another recommendation from Chris at Flyride. He uses these to cut open the plastic around the headlight. Yes, it's a uh, rather a nauseating thing to kind of wrap your mind around, but if you do it correctly and carefully, it's actually a very simple process. And that is definitely not the man for the job. <laughs> hmm. Decisions, decisions. Three o'clock, nah, I shouldn't drink a beer today. Water's probably a good idea, but I think, uh, yeah. 
Shout out to uh, whoever ordered these to my address. I think it was supposed to be one of my neighbors, but the house number on my road actually doesn't exist and they showed up in my house. So I don't know, maybe it was the FedEx man looking out for me. I know he watches my videos. I see you, dude. I appreciate you. All right, guys, so we just upgraded our bit. Wooden nails, nice. This one's pretty nimble. Nice pick, Jake, nice pick. And uh, yeah, we're about to get started. So we're gonna crank this thing up to the full setting and uh, boom. Go at it, boys. Let's get this process started. I'm excited to see what these Ram headlights look like exposed. So inside our headlight, that is what we were looking to extract. And we've got it out, as you can see in this one here. And then the one, of course, that we just did with you guys, which is right here. So if you caught that Chevy headlight building video, you saw kind of how this works. We cut the lens off and then the bezel was actually screwed into the lens. So yes, what we then do is ultimately just take that bezel out. One, two, three, four, five little tiny screws and then we are in business. But what you need to realize is when we're doing this, you wanna cut all the way around the complete outside of the lens. And this might look a little bit ugly, a little bit disgusting, a little bit questionable at this point in time, but it's really not. And this all gets sealed back up, if you guys can recall with silicone. But it is definitely a process and it is a little scary because if you go too deep with that cutting edge, you could jeopardize the entire functionality of said headlight because if you cut into that motherboard or this little daytime running light, maybe even those wires, which are obviously out of the way. But ultimately what I'm trying to say is you actually don't know what's underneath. And it's really honestly challenging to balance the oscillator on a tiny little bit when it's oscillating at whatever level 12 is. I mean, it's fast. Couple RPMs. Couple RPMs per RPM. what he said. <laughs> Listen to this guy, he's the expert. <laughs> I know, I'm a giant brain. <laughs> I'm a giant brain. Caleb, play the clip. I see you. I'm a giant brain. <laughs> Clip is gonna make its way into every vlog. I'm a jam brain. <laughs> I'm a jam brain. <laughs> so that came out though pretty good. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna dismantle these and get them down to Sean because we are actually going to have him mess around with these. And I think we are gonna end up deleting that amber light too. It's just, just one of those things. Like if you go through the task of truly operating and surgically removing said lens, you might as well delete the amber that they're required to put in. I think it's actually a law to put the amber in, but I mean, that law makes lights look like sh in my opinion, so uh, yeah, it's gone. Now I don't got, now I don't guy if you noticed. Ooh, I love when I talk extremely effectively. Jake just had an oh oh moment. Dude, that face though. Ooh. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Limited actually has a different headlight than uh, pretty much all the other Ram models. And it's where the other Rams have these two LEDs that kind of run up and connect right here, which actually look really good. I didn't realize that, but the Limited has these as daytime running lights and then this one here on the bottom. So rather than two that kind of connect here, just got this bottom one, the projector instead of, I think just typical bulb LEDs. And then these kind of like, I don't even know what you would call this, this stack, this this kind of quad style daytime running light slash projector. I like that though. I think it's different. And I think that these are gonna look really good when they're ultimately paint matched from our good friend, Sean down at Peach Bottom Auto Body. It was this one first here. That's good. And then we've got our lens and of course our light. Now, what we would do at this point is if we had everything done, we would actually dremel all of these edges with a small little fine grit sanding piece of paper, get all of these little pieces of plastic residue off, and then we would ultimately just re-glue it. So we'll take black silicone, boom, 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 put it all back together. But honestly, actually, you can kind of envision what the light would look like if it didn't have the bezel and it was kind of paint matched because the housing is black and everything like that. So that's gonna look sweet. I cannot wait to see them done. Also, on another note, we did get some of the chassis components recoded. I'm a total idiot and forgot to film it, but it looks fantastic. It looks like better than new, honestly. For whatever reason, I guess the coating on these axles isn't the best, but we did go through and clean it up very, very nicely. So now it looks pretty much brand spanking new. With all this powder coat that's gonna be going on this build in the near future here, we couldn't leave those axles that way. It was just really, really bothering me. And cue the, hold on, play that again, Caleb. 
Cue the dis <laughs> cue the disruption in both what we were talking about and our scenery. Sorry about that, guys. Our SD card decided to kind of just take a crap on us, and I didn't have a spare on me, which is kind of weird because I keep one generally in my wallet. So anyway, yeah, long story short, this is where we're gonna pretty much wrap up this video for obvious reasons. As of right now, we're hanging out with my in-laws. They came down to hang out with Jack the Fourth. They obviously have a fantastic choice in colorways on vehicles as well. We are completely like white out nation right now. It's kind of hilarious. I genuinely wonder what my neighbors think when they drive by. Anyway, we've got the bezels in the Denali. I will be sending them out tomorrow because today is Sunday. So Sean at Peach Bottom can knock those out and get them painted. I can't wait to get them back and get these lights put back together. Also, I just wanted to talk real quick about how I missed an upload this past Sunday. If you follow me on Instagram, then you probably know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then here's my Instagram tag. It's also in the description below as well as my other social links. So check them out. I love to connect with you guys in as many ways and areas as possible. But yes, I missed an upload on Sunday. It's kind of crazy because I did the math. A full year in weeks is 52 weeks and then a half a year is half of 52, which is 26. So 26 plus 52 is 78. And I've only ever missed one upload in that entire 78 weeks. Usually when I miss an upload, I get really kind of freaked out because I kind of feel like one, I'm dropping the ball on all of you because I know a lot of you look forward to the content that I publish. And believe me, I'm feeling the love guys. I appreciate every single one of you. And two, it's kind of let down to me. But in this instance, a major life event just occurred where we have a little man in our life. I will be including him from time to time. It's just that right now he is a tiny little infant. A lot of you have been asking about how he's doing and guys, like I can't even begin to tell you just how blessed and grateful and thankful we are to have a healthy, happy little man. And on top of that, he's been sleeping like a charm. I am going to knock on wood for that one. And honestly, just enjoying the all new to me dad life is fantastic. Dad jokes to follow without a question of a doubt. Just give me a little bit of time to kind of establish my tenure in being a dad if you catch my drift. But that being said, that's where I'm gonna sign off for today's video. Thank you guys so much for the support as always. I absolutely love every single one of you. If you haven't already, grab some five times entries before they end this week for Dream Diesel giveaway number 11. You have just about two days remaining before we go to two times entries. And at that point, well, we will already be halfway through that giveaway, which is crazy. Like time is flying. Oh, also, yeah, welcome to summer. I mean, come on, let's talk about as many current events as possible, eh? But on a real note, guys, tap that thumbs up button if you haven't already, consider subscribing and staying around and ever so carefully turn on that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on future content. That being said, I will see you all in the next episode.